on behalf of uh, the Cumberland Association. Uh, they said tell each church thank you for uh, another good year. All the reports went well. And uh, they're planning, I think, next Cumberland at the uh, Bible College. And uh, if things go well, then everybody in our uh, association will be able to see what God has done out there. And they're expecting a, a large crowd. Uh, another one report that I'll just mention briefly was the youth camp report. They broke all records with children last year. And it's the first time in the history of the camp that they had to turn children away. Didn't have any room. Uh, and they had mats put everywhere they could put them. And they turned 25 away. So they're uh, starting yesterday uh, to try to raise enough money to build some 15 by 24 cabins like was there back when we uh, purchased the land. But that's a good problem to have, isn't it? I forgot how many were saved and uh, they're expecting, they had over 600 plus and they're already expecting more than 750 next year. So, uh, that's a, a good problem. Satan don't have all the youth. Amen. Uh, he'll try to tell you he does, but he doesn't. There's some good people. Turn with me, if you will, to Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. And... I want to speak to you, take this scripture not out of context, but uh, on how to defeat Satan. Because I heard all this week that Satan is alive and well. Well, so is God. Uh, God's never even been sick. So, uh, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. I uh, had a very busy week this week, but I enjoyed it. And uh, I'd like to say to Becky Reagan, who was nice enough to let me stay in what they call a cabin at, on the Tennessee River. It is a nice house that they've had about four years. And I was able to stay there Monday uh, night when I got there and had supper and went to revival service with uh, Brittany and her church family. And then uh, I spent the night there on the river and was able to stay there all day. Tuesday it was court time and uh, it was a blessing uh, to be able to be there. Uh, by now you have turned in your Bibles to Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8 in just four points this morning. Some of you saying, yeah, and how many sub points? Mm -hmm. But uh, we're going to be careful. Listen to what the Bible says in 4.8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. When we walked out of the courthouse Tuesday, 
we still didn't have all the news till Thursday night because the probation officer had an emergency and couldn't be there. And, uh, Brittany and myself turned around and back into the clerk's office and she said, I need to know, am I on probation or am I off? And the lady there said, only your probation officer can answer that. And she said, well, my phone's messed up. Let me give you my uncle's number. So Thursday afternoon, my phone rang. And I need to speak to Brittany Smith. And I said, well, I'm her uncle. Uh, but she doesn't live here. And the person said, well, I'm a probation officer. Uh, how can I get a hold of her? And I said, her phone should be fixed. This is about 6 o'clock Thursday. I thought by 6.30 I would be hearing something. At 8.30 or quarter to 9, I still hadn't heard anything, and I'm walking the floor. So I finally gave in, and I called Brittany. And I, she's probably going to watch this in a little bit. And I said, why haven't I heard anything? She said, I literally just found out five minutes ago myself. Uh, she had taken a message on her phone while she was either eating or working or whatever and hadn't listened to it till uh, later that night. And uh, she was on cloud nine, and so was I when she hung up. She said, I am, uh, I've been set free, and I could preach Martin Luther's sermon this morning. But uh, it was a wonderful week there. But what brought that to my mind was what I just read you. When we came out, I said, honey, whatever you do, just be careful. And she said, Uncle Ronnie, I'm going to make sure my heart stays clean. Make sure that my heart stays right. And if you can do that, you can make it. And I thank the Lord for those words. I will never forget them. And I want you to pray with me and for me and I'm going to try to give you some scripture to help you to defeat Satan. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you for what we've experienced this week. What our ears have heard. What our eyes have seen. What our spirit has felt. Lord, I pray that you will bless not only Brittany's life, but I thank you for what everybody else had to say. And I thank you for the example that she has set. Now I pray, Father, that her freedom will keep her free. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will build a hedge around her and protect her. And may she be a light to her family Keep her strong. Keep her faith strong. Bless us today with your word and help strengthen us as we seek to live in a dark world. May our lights be bright. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Yesterday was... Uh, a day of remembrance for me. Some, and I probably shouldn't say this since next Sunday's baptism, but I uh, was privileged to sit at a table when the moderator said, all the ministers are going to be seated in the main area of the fellowship hall. The rooms on the side are for all of our visitors and other people. They will conduct their meeting while they eat because we have so much to take care of. 
And the first person that came and sat down beside of me was Dr. Ken Riggs. And he patted me on the back and sat down. Then right across from me, Steve Lava came and sat. And then several others I could go on naming that I haven't seen in a long, long time. But I was facing right where the baptistry used to be when that church was just a basement. 1701 uh, Highway 96 in Burns, Tennessee in uh, Dixon County. And one of the largest people that I've ever baptized, I had the privilege of baptizing and I'm talking, gosh, 35, 38 years ago. And we got in the baptistry. And I'm sitting there thinking, and I just punched Dr. Riggs. And I said, you remember when the baptistry was right there before they built the church upstairs and moved it upstairs? He said, I certainly do. Well, Wayne Bess was the pastor there. He's the pastor at Ashland City Free Will Baptist Church now. We've been good friends ever since Bible college. Went through school together. And he heard me say that. Brother Wayne said, I have told that story too everywhere I've been. I've told the story about the day that the preacher got done. <laughs> I said had cameras been rolling I would have had $10,000 <laughs> what happened was this we got in the new baptistry I think we were the first ones to use it and she said if you get me down I'll get up that was her words and I said well we'll get you down well, she did. She went down like the Titanic. <laughs> and then she reached and grabbed me around the neck with both hands. And when her feet came up, I went down. <laughs> <laughs> we both come out soaking wet. And it, you know, it, it was just, it was one of those Kodak moments. I wish somebody had got that on film. Uh, it would have won $10,000. But that lady's still living for the Lord. She was here four or five years ago that sat right back there close to where Kenny and Gail sitting. I did not recognize her, but she had a wheelchair sitting in the aisle. Some of you might remember because she was in her apartment in another state and a bullet crossed the golf course and came through her window and crippled her. And uh, they still don't know today where the bullet come from. Mrs. Vannis. But she said, do you remember me? And I said, no, I don't know. It's been that many years. And she said, do you remember coming up a little driveway on Christmas Eve back in a pasture field where we were building a house and the walls cardboard and you led me to Jesus Christ that Christmas Eve best Christmas present I ever had and I said yes ma'am I remember that now and so I got to reminisce about that yesterday but back to the subject I thought when I read these scriptures in verse 8, finally, brother, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, are just, are pure, are lovely, are of good report, if they be any virtue and praise, think, on these things. And that's what I was doing, remembering good things, good times, good places, good. 
And but this morning, Satan wants you to think about all the bad. Keep your mind tore up, and listen to how you do that by the decisions you make. And I'm not going to take time to read all of these, but I'm going to give you the Scripture. In Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19, the Bible says this, Choose life that both thy and thy seed may live. And so the Bible tells us not only there, it tells us several other places that we choose to do the things that we do. And we blame it a lot of times on other people, but it's choices that we make. And that's why I told Brittany, please be careful. And she said, I'm going to choose good people to be around. I'm going to keep my heart pure. I'm going to keep my heart straight. And so the Bible says, choose life. Joshua said, choose you this day who you will serve. If God is God, then serve Him. If the devil is the devil and you want to serve Him, then serve Him. He said, I wish you would be hot or cold. Why did God say that? He said, because I don't want you to be lukewarm. On a scale of 1 to 10, I want you to be a 10 plus or a 1. I do not want you to be a 5, not in the middle. He said in His Word, if you're in the middle, you're lukewarm, and lukewarm stuff makes me sick. That's not my Word, that's God's Word. He said, I want you to be where there's no guessing. You're either on fire for God or you're not. You're either lost or you're saved. Don't let people have to wonder. And I've had a lady in this church came one time and said, you know, I've lived with this person as my husband for I forgot how many years, but I never knew whether he was saved or not. I don't know how that can be possible. But the Bible says we have a choice. Some people have a negative attitude about anything. They're not going to think positive. You tell them that you've got a half a tank of gas, you think you can make it, they're going to say only a half a tank, there ain't no way we're going to make it. They're going to look at the negative side of it. They're going to look at it half empty while other people will look at it half full. There's some people that just not going to be positive about anything but positive that they're going to be negative. So listen, some people have a negative attitude. They are the reason that a lot of people are unhappy because they're unhappy. And they make others unhappy. To both themselves and others. You can be optimistic in all kinds of situations. And I've said this before, but Uncle Tom said, thank God that things are as well as they are because they could be worse. I've seen some people that I don't know how in the world they make it. But without God's help, there we go. And thank the Lord that He helps us. And we can be optimistic by deliberate action of our will. Whatever we decide to do, let's decide on the positive side. Let's decide we're going to make this a better place. Let's decide we're going to make it a better church. Let's decide that we're going to make our attitudes better. Let us decide that we're going to make our self more friendly. The Bible said if you want to have friends, show yourself friendly. 
Don't wait on somebody else. You do it. And so we make the decision sometime, are we going to let this person or this obstacle or this problem keep us miserable or take us down? When a lot of times it's only affecting you. It's not affecting the others. They don't know how you feel. So think positive. Don't be like the football player that was playing high school football and <coughs> walked out onto the field and or before he walked out onto the field, he turned to his mother there in the stands and said, Oh, Lord, did you see the size of that team? We're going to get clobbered. She said, Son, don't go out there with that attitude. Go out there with a positive attitude. He said, Okay, Mama, I'm positive we're going to get clobbered. <laughs> you know, that's how we do sometime with our life. We look and we don't see the hope that God has for us. And there's stories in the Bible where He opened the people's eyes and opened and they saw encamped all around them angels. Just think. I believe in guardian angels. And I believe that You've got one. And I've said before that Dickies wore out two or three. They've had a nervous breakdown. But I wouldn't say that if I didn't love him. But I know this. I know that we sometimes put ourselves in a depressed state because we're thinking negative. And the Bible says in the very verse that I read, if there be any virtue or any good thing, think about this. Remember the good times. Because everybody in this world is going to have tribulation. And then daily decisions. Daily decisions, my friend, the Bible teaches is a necessity. You choose this day to obtain this. Think about it. It's God's plan for your life. What is it today? God's plan for your life today is victory, not defeat. God's plan for your life today is to be happy. I came that you might have joy and your joy might be full. I came that you might have hope. I came to give sight to the blind. I came to give hearing to the deaf. I came to give speech to the dumb. I came that the cripple might be able to walk. I came that the hungry might be fed. I came that people might be saved and change their destiny from hell toward heaven. I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I came that I might save your soul forever to live in eternity in a place called heaven with me and my Father. That's how we need to think. We are not defeated foe, folk. We belong to the King of glory. We are God's Son. We've been adopted into the family of God. Jesus Christ is our brother in Christ. He's God's begotten son. And when you get saved, you are adopted into the family of God. And therefore, you are on the winning side. I've read the last pages of the book and we win. We need to remember that when the devil tells us we're defeated. We ain't played the last inning yet was told a story a long time ago about these two little league teams. And it reminds me of a few years ago, Regina and I were, I don't know who we went to see play. Somebody from her daycare. Just little. <coughs> and as we're watching them play, the kids are doing fine, but the parents can't get along. The umpire called it wrong. The coach messed up. And then here's the two daddies going at it right in front of 
front of the kids and the kids are shaking hands but the parents are leaving there fighting mad. You know, we, we just look at it the wrong way. We need to look at it the way children do. They can be into it in just a minute and hugging the necks and the next minute. They forget things that so easily upset them and you're back their best friend again. Think about it. We need to plan our life with victory, but talking about the two teams and the attitude. One lady on Davis Shore told Regina, I'm on God's team. These two teams were playing and somebody like us that just walked up on this game walked up on that game and they saw the scoreboard and it said 15 to nothing. And the man said to one of the little boys, that's a pretty bad score up there, isn't it? Who's got 15? They have. And your team's got how many? Nothing. He said, that's bad. The little boy said, no, I ain't bad. We ain't had our batch yet. <laughs> you understand how we need to look at life? When the devil gets you down, <clears throat> hey, we ain't had our batch yet. God's on His way. He's sending His angels. And He's going to supply every need that we have. Whether it be whatever, He is the God of all. He has all power and can do all things. And we can do all things through Christ which strengthens us. We need to tell the devil, we ain't had our bat yet. The score will change when we get up to bat. And the second point, I told you, the second point is this. In Psalms 119, verse 11, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against Thee. There's many negative people that you'll run into. There's many people, as Nicole just said, that'll take you down the wrong path. But we need to live a life where we know how to pray. We need to live a life where we know how to read our Bibles. And if we pray and read our Bibles, we will not be defeated. We gain strength through prayer. We gain faith. Faith comes, and the Bible tells you, you say, preacher, I need more faith. Well, listen to me. The Bible tells you how to get it. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. The Word of God will do a work in your life that no other book will do. Brother Teddy said in Sunday school class this morning about a fellow that was uh, trying to prove the Bible wrong and ended up getting saved. And then that discussion went on and Regina told about a Russian scientist that was going to prove the Bible wrong and he ended up getting saved. You get into the Word of God, it will change your life. Devotion is necessary to a positive life. Devotion is necessary to a positive life. We learn to trust when we see that God answers our prayers. We need to see that the Bible brings peace. It'll speak peace to a troubled soul. The Bible brings love. The Bible brings joy. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. And I came that your joy might be full. All of that's in His book. Do we believe it? We need to. And then, 
Be faithful in your devotion. When God hadn't answered your prayer the next day, keep praying. I heard my wife say this morning, I prayed for Brother Ronnie's mom and dad 20 years. And she was with them when they got saved. I wasn't. A man named... I'm not going to mention his name. He's gone on to heaven. People know him if I mention it. But I remember what he said to me in church. He said, why are these prayer requests still in the bulletin? Didn't we pray for them last week? Yes, sir. Well, take them out. We've already prayed for them. Move them. My words were this. Don't you ever quit praying for me. Amen. I need the prayer every day of my life. And you need to practice. Mm -hmm. So if you have nobody else or nothing else to pray for, pray for me. And I want to pray for you. And don't ever think that we can stop praying for each other because when we do, Satan will move in. We need to hold each other up in prayer every day of our life. I know Nicole and Marcus was with us and we pulled in Preacher Hollifield's house in Swannanoa. We visited a while and we were leaving. He came to the car and he put his hand, I was already in the driver's seat, he put his hand on my arm and he said, I want to tell you something. He said, all the years you've been gone, I've called your name out to God every night before I go to sleep Amen. in my prayer list. That's the kind of people you want on your side. That'll pray. And I'm telling you, I pray for you. I pray for this church every day of my life. That God will help you. That God will defend you. That God will keep you healthy. He'll keep your mind. He'll keep you in perfect peace who has stayed on Him. Nothing is stronger than prayer. Prayer will move mountains. Prayer will heal things. Prayer will do more than we can comprehend. Remember that. The third thing that I want you to see is we defeat Satan by being diligent. The Bible says in Proverbs 11, 27, He that diligently seeks good has favor. Diligently seek it. Selfish, selfishness leads to being negative. If you're selfish, you're a negative person. Those who are concerned only with personal gain and self-interest tend to become negative people. Not positive people. When things don't go their way, they're negative. You can subdue a negative attitude by helping the less fortunate, by lending a helping hand, by visiting the sick, by visiting the lonely, by loving the unlovable. Lift up your self-esteem by helping others lift up their self-esteem. Be diligent for God. Seek to share Christ with others. 
Sharing brings victory over being negative. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 30. And the last one is we can defeat Satan by direction. The Bible says in Psalms 32 and verse 8, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which you should go. We can defeat Satan by listening to the Holy Spirit. This is the way. Walk ye in it. This is the way to go. This is what you ought to do. This, and sometimes it might look like the roughest road. Think about what Moses faced when he came up to the river or the sea. And on one side is the desert. On the other side is a mountain that's unmovable by man. In front of him is the sea. And behind him is the whole Egyptian army, including Pharaoh, to destroy him. Looked like there was no way out. But we serve a God that makes a way where there is no way. And the waters parted. And the Bible said that over two million Israelites walked across on dry ground. Now I've heard Bible scholars that know a lot more than me say that they don't think that's possible. But if the Bible says it, I believe it. Amen. I believe it was dry ground. And they made it across. So I'm telling you here and now, watch the direction you go. The Bible says the steps of a righteous person is ordered of the Lord. This is the way. Walk ye in. Follow the leadership of your heart. Give your heart to God. And do whatsoever thus saith the Lord, and you won't go wrong. Let's stand and we'll be this place. Brother Dickie, dismiss us, please. Father, we thank you for another beautiful day, and we thank you for the opportunity to come to your house. But Lord, most of all, we thank you for your word. Lord, just as we go out the doors today, keep in our minds and our heart what was said inside this sanctuary this morning. Amen. Lord, when we mix again with the outside world, let them know from whence we came and what we did while we were here under the sound of your voice. Lord, we just ask you to be with those that's on our prayer list. Lord, we thank you for being with us today. We ask you to turn us again to the next appointed time. In this coming week, Lord, we just ask you to watch over us, guide us, and direct us as only you can. We ask these and all blessings in thy lovely name. Amen.